In this lesson, we take a look at uh, custom AOVs and object mask. Let's start with object uh, mask, which is easier. Object mask is exactly like object buffer multipass in Cinema 4D. In Cinema 4D, if we want to create a mat for an object to have greater control over that object in compositing, we add a Cinema 4D compositing tag to that object and create an object buffer for it. And uh, object mask in Arnold for Cinema 4D does exactly that. Now we have our basic scene here and the only change that I have is a bit in the hierarchy. You can see the glass is a child of the sphere. Right click on the abstract object here and go to C4D to a tags and add an object mask. As you can see, you only have one field to define the AOV name and right now it is object mask one. If I go to my render setting and open up the AOVs window, as you can see we have a new list called custom and if I select it you can see we have one inactive AOV which is object mask one and this is the object mask that we added to our abstract object. Let's activate it. Now, if I run my IPR, you can see we have this new AOV called Object Mask 1. And it is basically a simple math for this abstract object. Also, you notice that we can see our AOVs directly from the IPR, which is really, really great. So if we had more AOVs defined in our render setting, we would have been able to see it uh, from this display list in the IPR. And if I render my scene to the picture viewer, uh, here we go, we can see our object mask AOV in the AOVs list. There we go. Now let's close the picture viewer. Uh, add an object mask to the sphere here. So just right click on it, C4D to a tags and add an object mask tag. Uh, automatically the AOV name for the second object mask has changed to object mask two because we added this object mask to the parent, all the children will also be in the object mask. So in this case, this object mask is going to create a mat for both the sphere and the glass. So let me rename it to object mask sphere glass. There we go. Now let's add a separate object mask to the glass itself. And rename it to object mask glass. And in this mask, we are just going to have a mat for the glass, but the object mask we apply to the sphere will still take the glass into consideration. Now let's go to our render setting and open up the AOVs window. Select the custom AOVs and as you can see, we have our object mask glass AOV and object mask sphere glass AOV. Move both of them to the active list and run the IPR. And if I go to the display list, we are going to have object mask glass AOV and object mask sphere glass AOV. We still have our object mask one, which is a math for the abstract object. Uh, now imagine if you output these object mask AOVs, you can have a great deal of control over these objects in the compositing app and for example, perform a color correction only for the object with the mat. Let's change the display mode to beauty and start talking about custom AOVs. Uh, even though the object mask is a custom AOV, but the way you set up other custom AOVs is quite different, but you know, also very simple. Let's close uh, render settings window and let's create a new standard shader. Let's apply to all of these objects. Open the shader up and open its network. Now, if you remember when we were discussing different shaders and nodes, I promised we discuss AOV nodes in the rendering section. 
you can use these AOV nodes uh, to write out different custom passes or AOVs from your shading network. Let's start with a very simple example. Let me duplicate this standard shader and change its diffuse color to this cyanish bluish color sort of. Now, let's say I want my main standard shader in the beauty pass, but I want to write out an AOV in which this blue standard shader uh, is applied to this object. So uh, we are trying to write out an AOV now. That's why we are going to need an AOV write node. And in this case, AOV write RGB node. Let's drag it to the work area. Uh, we have a pass through input, an AOV input, and AOV name. We need to set the AOV write RGB as the root. So press Control Shift and V. Now connect the shader that you want to see in the beauty pass to the pass through input. So in this case, we need to connect the white standard shader to the pass through and connect the shader that you want to write it out as an AOV to the AOV input. Let's connect the blue standard shader to the AOV input of the AOV write RGB node. Now, Select the AOV write RGB itself and in the AOV name field you need to specify a name for this new AOV. Let's name it blue objects for example. Now if I go to render settings and open up AOVs window, I need to add this custom AOV that we just created manually. So click on add custom AOV button here. Now you need to use the exact same name that you specified in the AOV name field of the AOV write RGB node, which was blue objects and press OK. Now, if you go to the custom list, you can see we have a new active AOV called blue objects. Press OK and make sure the IPR is running. Now, if I open the display list, we have a new AOV which is called blue objects and we have the blue standard shader applied to the objects in this AOV and we can for example use this AOV I mean imagine if the standard shader was much more complex it has the texture it was reflective and this way we can uh, decide uh, for example in post uh, to use the original white standard shader or uh, this new standard shader we can replace them so it is really useful I mean being able to render out uh, as many passes you want and then decide which one to use in the post is going to be really really uh, useful uh, great now let's open up the network editor for the standard shader again Let's see if we can write an object uh, ID AOV. So this way we can create an automatic mat for all the objects that have the standard shader applied to. We need a utility shader. So let's search for it and drag it to the work area. Let's change the shade mode to flat because we are trying to write it out as an AOV and flat would be the best shade mode and change the color mode to object. Let's drag another AOV write RGB node to the work area. Change the AOV name to maybe object mat. Now, uh, there is a big question here. As you uh, know, we need to connect the AOV write RGB to the Arnold beauty port. But if I do that for the second AOV write RGB node, we are going to lose the blue objects AOV and this is where the pass through node comes to the rescue. So let's search for a pass through node and let's drag it to the work area. As you can see pass through node has one main pass through input so this is where you connect your main shader. In this case the white standard shader is our main shader. And this is the one that we want to see it in the beauty pass. So connect the output of the shader to the pass through input of the pass through node. And set the pass through node as the root. 
Now if I take a look at the blue objects AOV in my IPR, uh, we get nothing. That is because we still haven't connected the first write RGB node to the pass through. Now let's connect the output of the first AOV write RGB node to the evaluation one input of the pass through node. And as soon as I do that, we get our blue objects AOV again. Now let's come back to the utility shader and our second AOV write RGB node. Let's select the utility shader and change the color mode to ID maybe. So we have a bit more control over the objects. Now connect the utility output to the AOV input and connect the output of the AOV write RGB node to evaluation to input of the pass through node. Now we need to go to our AOV window and define this new AOV. Go to the render settings and open up the AOV window. Click on add custom AOV and type object mats and press OK. And now we have a new AOV. Press OK. And to make sure, let's rerun the IPR. And as you can see, we have an object mats AOV, which is the utility shader set to ID mode. In the lesson uh, when we're discussing utility shader, I showed you how to manipulate object IDs in the uh, scene. And you can refer back to that and adjust this AOV more if you wanted to. Let's quickly add an ambient occlusion AOV and let's uh, maybe write out an ambient occlusion pass, which is really useful in post. Let's close all of these windows and create a new ambient occlusion shader. <clears throat> I mean, we could have created the shader inside our standard shader, but I want to have an ambient occlusion pass, not just for these three objects, also for the stage or the backdrop object that we have here. So that's why I created here so I can use it in both of the shaders, both the uh, white standard shader that we have and the uh, ground shader that we have in the material manager. Let's uh, open up our original standard shader and its network. Let me just adjust this window a bit. Now let's click and drag our ambient occlusion shader to the work area of the standard shader. Drag a new AOV right RGB node. And now connect the output of the ambient occlusion shader to the AOV input of the AOV right RGB node. Select the node and change its AOV name to AO for ambient occlusion. And let's connect the output to the evaluation three input of the pass through node. Open up the render setting and AOVs window. Let's add a new custom AOV and name it AO and press OK. Now we have a new AOV in our custom AOVs called AO. And if I rerun the IPR, we are going to have an ambient occlusion pass for ourselves. Let's do the same thing for our ground shader, which is applied to our backdrop. So open up the ground shader and its network. Let's drag the ambient occlusion shader from our material manager to the work area drag an AOV write RGB node to the work area also and set it as the root. Connect the output of the standard shader as the pass through and connect the output of the ambient occlusion as the AOV input. Now select the AOV write RGB node and type AO for the AOV name. Great. Now if I check out our AOV, our AO or ambient occlusion AOV, you can see we have added the backdrop to the ambient occlusion pass and we still have our beauty pass intact. 
Now, as soon as we write an AOV, uh, we can actually read it, adjust it, and write it out again as another AOV. So let's say, uh, just for fun, we want to have a second ambient occlusion pass in which the white color of the ambient occlusion is purple, for example. I mean, there is another way and another way and another way to do it, but we're just doing it this way here to show you how to use write and read AOV nodes. Let's get back to our original standard shader and open its network. Let me adjust this window a bit. Now, <clears throat> to read an existing AOV, you would need uh, an AOV read node. Let's load an AOV read RGB node. Select the node. Now, you need to define which AOV you want to read. In this case, we want to read ambient occlusion AOV. So let's type AO. Now that is loaded, we can do everything with it. Let's me drag a flat shader and let's change its color to this purple or whatever color you want. Now let's sort, search for a layer color node and drag it to the work area. Connect the output of the read RGB node to the first layer and the flat node to the second layer. Now select the layer color node and increase layer 1 alpha and layer 2 alpha to 1 and change the layer 2 blending mode to multiply. So we're basically multiplying our flat shader over our ambient occlusion AOV. Now we need to write this out. So let's drag a new AOV write RGB node. In the AOV name, maybe let's type something like AO purple. Connect the output of the layer color node to the AOV input of the AOV write RGB node and connect the output to the evaluation for input of the pass through node. Now we need to add this new AOV. So open up the render settings window and open up the AOV window. Create a new custom AOV. Type AO purple. And press OK. And press OK again. And if I run the IPR, uh, you can see we have this new AOV, which is completely black, this AO purple. For whatever reason, when we read AOVs and then adjust them and write them out again, IPR doesn't show that AOV. And we need to render it to our picture viewer to see the pass. So press Shift R to render the scene to the picture viewer. So here is our render and if I go to the layer tab, you can see we have our AO purple AOV. We only see it on these objects and not the backdrop because we didn't apply our final changes to the backdrop shader. Great, that is about custom AOVs and object masks and just, uh, you know, keep it up. We are not far from finishing the course and I hope you are enjoying the course and I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you for watching this tutorial. It was a free sample from our course comprehensive introduction to Arnold for Cinema 4D. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. See you next time.